Hi guys and welcome to uh, today's webinar which is titled Digital Transformation for Nonprofits with Microsoft 365. Um, I'd like to do a quick introduction. So my name is Dougie Wood. Um, I'm one of the solution architects at Valto um, and I've been um, sort of working on a lot of kind of Microsoft 365 solutions for sort of document management. I've um, got a very strong background in kind of um, policies and document management automations. Um, I, I lead the sort of development team at Valto. So we, we do a lot of kind of solutions, um, digital transformation solutions, where we take things like paper-based processes and we convert them into digital solutions using the Microsoft 365 products. Um, Valto have partnered last year uh, with the Cheshire West Voluntary Action. Um, and our objection our objective was to connect with local nonprofits uh, to help them adopt the free Microsoft offerings. Um, so maybe Joanna, if I could just hand over to yourself just to do a quick introduction. Thanks, Dougie. Hi, everyone that's joined. I'm hoping that some of you know me. Uh, my name is Joanne Walton and I've worked at Cheshire West Voluntary Action for about nine years. So we're kind of what's known as an infrastructure organisation or an umbrella organisation. And essentially we champion the voluntary sector or the not for profit sector across West Cheshire. So we support hundreds of really small groups, voluntary groups, community groups, faith groups, social enterprises, really just to enable them to be as efficient as they possibly can. And, and in, at the moment, as you can imagine, to really help them to not only survive but try and thrive. Most of our support is free. We're doing a lot online obviously at the moment with the current situation. So we do network meetings, training, literally a bit of a one-stop shop. So any support needs that you have then please do go on our website, um, join our, become a member. It's free if you aren't a member and just opens the doors really to a wealth of support and services. There's only six of us, I think, of the team, six or seven, and we have a wealth of knowledge and expertise. So collectively, we can normally signpost you or help you in-house. And as I say, most of the support is free. So we've done a few events with Volto and uh, Dougie in the past. I don't know whether Dougie's going to mention the uh, Microsoft one that we did a while ago, but it's been so valuable for us, you know, with the office closed in March and without access to things like Microsoft Teams and 365 we just we wouldn't have been able to communicate nowhere near as effectively as we have so it has been brilliant and the, you know the best part about it is it's free there's so many things out there for charities that are free but Dougie will uh, is probably the best person to speak to you about that. <laughs> Thanks, yeah Dougie. brilliant thank you cool so um, today's agenda um, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of the different products which are inside of Microsoft 365, which are freely available to nonprofits. Um, that would include things like Microsoft bookings for kind of creating um, sort of the ability to book onto like training courses um, or booking out sort of calendars and shared sort of resources. We're going to be looking at Microsoft Forms, so creating easy ways of creating things like um, project feedback forms, training feedback forms, things like that. We're also going to take a little look at the Microsoft Teams, OneDrive and SharePoint. So from a collaboration perspective and using kind of document management with inside of Microsoft 365. Um, there's also been some previous webinars as well that I'd be happy to send some links out, which have gone into a lot more depth and a lot more detail specifically about Microsoft Teams. So if that is something that of interest uh, to you, we can uh, forward on the links to, the, to that particular webinar. Um, then we'll be talking about Planner and To Do. Now Planner is essentially a way that your team can and manage day to day kind of project tasks or planning out kind of how you're going to do, carry out a particular work stream. And then to do is something that you can then use as a personal kind of shopping list of tasks taken from both the planner as a sort of overall kind of team set of tasks and then managing those on a day to day basis. Microsoft List is a nice way of creating sort of um, little databases and replacing Excel spreadsheets, um, as well as we've got a double, double one there, Microsoft Bookings. Then we're talking about Power Apps. Um, so Power Apps is essentially a way of building mobile applications and that are readily available on your mobile phones and tablets and providing that kind of digital transformation, as I said before, about replacing paper-based processes with these mobile um, apps. Then I've got some useful resources for you. So again, these slides can be available afterwards and there's some useful links uh, that may be of interest to you. Um, and then we're going to have a Q&A at the end. Now, um, today's takeaways will be around kind of Microsoft 365. Now, the actual licenses we've covered previously on a separate webinar. So if, if you want to have, have more of a 
in-depth conversation about um, the, the free licenses that are available to you, then we can send you that particular webinar or you, we can have a chat to discuss that a bit further. But this uh, webinar is particularly more focusing on the actual products that you get with those licenses. Um, there's some useful resources to get started. So there'll be some links about how as a nonprofit you can register um, for some free Microsoft 365 licenses. And at the end, we'll do some Q&A. Unfortunately, I'd missed off the Q&A um, from this live Teams event. So please email your questions to hello at valto.co.uk and I'll review those emails at the end of the session. So some of the nonprofits that we have I've worked with in the past. So we've worked with all different types of, uh, of nonprofits and charitable organizations from very small local things like Your Space. Um, so uh, Valto are based in, in Chester and uh, Your Space are based in Wrexham. So it's a nice local charity that we uh, like working with. Um, and then there's all sorts of different ranges of sizes then um, to sort of global size organizations like Turquoise Mountain or enterprise kind of levels as human appeal. So the first product that we're going to be talking about inside of Microsoft 365 is a product that is called Microsoft Bookings. Now, this is a resource booking tool which allows integration with Outlook calendars uh, and can be used for kind of booking onto training courses or, for example, I've seen people using it for um, like hair salons where people can book an appointment with a particular hairdresser. Um, just to give you a bit of background before I show this product, the way that we use this product is we noticed with our kind of support, we, we offer IT support and we noticed that uh, with our kind of um, support tickets, there'd often be cases where we needed to be able to connect to our customers' computers to help them fix it. Now that often um, led to a sort of a slower kind of um, uh, re resolution time because it would take a lot of time from the engineer to contact the client to say um, are you available tomorrow at nine o'clock for us to have a particular meeting and, and connect on to your um, computer and then they might come back and say oh no I'm not available at nine o'clock but I can do 11 o'clock and it'll go back on the voice and ping pong to try and find that right uh, point, point in time that they can have that meeting whereas with Microsoft bookings what you actually get is a portal um, that looks similar to this where um, customers uh, and external people can go on and book time directly with you using this particular portal. Now there's a whole host of different configurations with uh, this so I'm just going to show you how all of this is configured. So you get a admin portal that looks a bit like this where you can see the amount of bookings you've previously made in the past 30 days an estimated revenue because as well these bookings can also have a sort of financial kind of price against them so you might say well this type of a training course is 500 pounds this type of training course is 300 pounds or something like that and you can you can allocate um, sort of those costs against that and then you can also see how many customers have booked into to that as a high level as well. Now all of this is integrated directly with your Microsoft 365 Outlook calendar so you can very easily see um, from within here all the bookings that you've got coming up. You can book on behalf of a customer using the new booking form here as well as booking in time off which would essentially then remove your availability from your calendar to be able to be booked out. The booking page allows you to then configure what the end kind of portal would look like to your customer when they 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 went on to here and you can change the sort of colors the themes the logos and things like that you can also put custom kind of data usage consents and things like that as well as scheduling um, a sort of policy as well so what the typical time increments are to be shown in sort of 30 minutes an hour or something like that as well as what the lead times are so obviously you don't want necessarily someone booking something within say 24 hours so say for example if, if I had was offering training courses um, I wouldn't want someone to try and book on in the afternoon if, I, if I've already sort of got something in the morning and, and vice versa as well as an overall kind of lead time of saying okay well people can only book within the next 365 days so they can only book in the next kind of year kind of period all of our bookings as well can be um, then traced as customers so once people book onto our uh, onto our um, sort of events uh, we would also see them appear inside of this customers area here. We've also got the ability to add multiple staff members so it's not just one person's Outlook calendar that this can be it can also pool a bunch of different employees calendars so that you can get the, the best availability for that. 
as well as registering what type of services. So for example, for us, I've just got an example here of initial uh, sort of consult, but this might be that I can add additional kind of training. So maybe I can say in here, so sort of teams, oops, teams training, provide a description, and then I can say which staff members are eligible for delivering it. So I can say myself and Chris, um, the default kind of duration we might say is two hours. Uh, any buffer time that might prevent it from sort of starting or finishing between a different point. We can set our sort of prices, so we can say a price per hour, or a fixed price if we wanted to, or we could say it was completely free. And then we can put some general kind of details and notes and things like that around that as well. Then the business information is where you can configure what your sort of business name is, the address, um, any sort of replies, who do you want them to be sent to, any links to sort of things like your website, as well as a privacy policy and things like that, as well as uh, assigning your own kind of logo and business hours as well. So the most important thing about all of this is that it's only going to show a availability within the sort of business hours that you state. So for example, for us, we've got it between Monday and Friday from eight o'clock till five o'clock. Um, but if you also operated it on weekends, you might also want to put those in there as well. So once all of that is configured, um, that's when you'd get a portal that would look a little bit like this, where you can then share this with completely external users, your customers, clients, uh, suppliers. Uh, they can come in and select the type of slot that they want. So, for example, this might be a training course or this might be uh, a particular meeting or consultation that they would like. And all of those different types of services that you offer all have their own kind of fees associated to them. They all have their own time allocations to them as well. And then once they've selected that, they'll then see what dates uh, are available for that particular service. If you've got multiple staff members, they could also have a preference uh, over which staff member that they actually um, wanted to pick. So I could say, for example, for myself, and then that cuts down on what time availabilities I have. So this is now looking at my Outlook calendar to figure out when I have a one hour um, uh, slot to, to have this particular type of consultation. Uh, and if I had already had, for example, I, I've got like a one o'clock meeting on the 16th, so it's not offering one o'clock as a potential uh, opportunity there. Whereas if I change this to Chris, then he is available at one o'clock, so we can select that. At the bottom of the booking form, we also have the ability to capture form details. So the so customer may put in their name, their email address, phone number, address, things like that, and we can add additional fields in there if we wanted to. Once we click on that booking, it will send an email to the, per, the, the employee then it's booked that into their calendar and it'll have that meeting invite inside their Outlook calendar as well as putting it into the calendar of the external party, the, the client or the supplier who's used this booking form. So that is Microsoft Bookings. The next thing we're going to be talking about is Microsoft Forms. Now this is another one of the Microsoft 365 products which is designed to allow um, you to create forms really simply, really easily. It's very quick. Uh, it's a good competitor of uh, things like um, uh, Survey Monkey and things like that. So it might be that you've already got a forms um, sort of building tool that Microsoft Forms inside of Microsoft 365 would be able to replace for you. So just going back now into Microsoft Forms inside of um, our Office 365, this is what Microsoft Forms will look like. So we can see all the different types of forms we've previously created, and we can create a brand new form by clicking on the new form button across the top. It's really simple and really easy to create a form. So I'm just going to click on new form. Uh, I just need to log in on here. And I'm going to create, say, for example, a feedback form. So I'm going to type into the top feedback form. I'm then going to choose to add some new fields. So when I click on add new, you'll see that it's already got some sort of recommendations from previous forms that I've, I've submitted. Um, but I can also choose to add choice fields. I can add text or ratings as well as dates. So it might be, say, for example, it's a feedback form. I could say choice and say, how did we do? Then under options, I can say good bad and as you see I'm starting to put these in it's also quite clever that it will start promoting uh, possible options as well so I could actually say excellent very good or something like that and then I can reorder these and drag them around um, where I like I can add more kind of fields into this by clicking on add new and then we've got the ability to add sort of text so I might sort of say uh, name or something like that 
Uh, and again, I'll put that to the top. Um, and this is now just a really simplistic, really kind of basic form now that we've got created. We can style this up with a little bit of a theme as well. So say, for example, I might want to have uh, this kind of background. I can change the background image. I can change the colors really simple, really easy. Uh, but now this is my form complete. In, in simple terms, I've got the name and I know how we've done. We can add as many fields in, in here as we like. You can also add branching logic as well. So if somebody was to answer, OK, uh, it was bad, we might automatically then send them to the next question and say, OK, sorry to hear that, that you thought this was bad. Um, please provide a little bit more detail or something like that. We can see what our, our uh, feedback form looks like by clicking on the preview button. And this is what it would look like to somebody that we, we sent uh, this form to on their computer. But we can also see what it looks like on a mobile phone as well. So this was what it would look like if they open this up from their mobile phone. Uh, we can also submit something. So I'll just put in here. Excellent, submit and see what it looks like once it's been submitted as well. Now, Microsoft Forms can be used for internal use. So it might be feedback on, on a project that you've been working on. It might be feedback on um, so how, how a, something's gone, um, but you can also use it for external um, things as well. So you might want to send this out to customers, suppliers. Uh, maybe it's, it's somebody that you've provided some training for and it's training feedback form. How do we do rate us, that sort of thing. Um, and you can do that by clicking the share button across the top and you can see um, whether or not this is something that you can share only with inside your organization or anybody that you send this link to um, will then be able to respond to it. Now this is something that you can just grab that URL and send that to people in an email or an instant message or you can even use things like QR codes um, so you can download this um, barcode and attach that to like a post or a form or something that people can scan with their phone and that would automatically open this form. You can generate an embed so if you wanted to embed this into your public website um, as a sort of feedback form on the website you can do as well as when you click on email you can generate this as a email to, to send someone directly as well. Once you've had some responses you can click on the responses tab and you can see some very basic kind of KPIs about how long it's taken for someone to complete on average, uh, how many responses you've had um, and sort of general ratings about the different questions and, and things like that. You can also choose to open this in Excel so if you wanted to do your analysis in Excel you can whiz all this data all those different responses directly into Excel um, to do your analysis over there. So that was Microsoft Forms. The next thing we're going to be talking about is Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams is a platform for instant messaging and collaboration. You can also use Microsoft Teams for things like um, uh, meetings, both internal and external. And it generally sort of um, it improves the, uh, the overall sort of day to day sort of um, efficiencies of how you collaborate and you work with, with people. Um, Teams has also um, obviously got this kind of uh, ability for um, external meetings as well, just like a, like something like uh, Zoom would offer. Whereas Zoom, obviously, there's, there's a lot of concerns at the beginning of the year with sort of security concerns with Zoom. There's also a lot of additional costs which come with Zoom, whereas Microsoft Teams has all of this included as part of your sort of non-profit licenses. So I'm just going to quickly flick back to um, over here and then we'll just jump into a Microsoft team. So this is what Microsoft Teams looks like once you get inside of, of your team. You'll see all of the, uh, the teams you have available to you on the left hand side. Now when you first start using Microsoft Teams typically there would only be sort of a handful of teams that you would have access to. You won't have access to every single team within your kind of organization. You'll only have access to sort of like the teams that you're a member of. So for example if you work in the finance department you would be probably a member of the finance team. Um, and Again, you, you won't see all of these, but they will grow in time. Now you might have teams for departments, so like finance, IT, marketing, things like that. Um, but you also might have them for things like certain projects you're working on or so certain sort of um, work streams that you're kind of working on as well. So there's a number of ways that you might have uh, your teams kind of laid out. Once you're inside of a, of a team, you'll see, for example, here I've got this volunteer hub. So this is simulating potentially um, 
trustees um, as part of the sort of non-profit um, who want to be able to collaborate, who want to be able to share documents, who want to have conversations. Um, quite typically, we work with um, organizations which have previously used things like WhatsApp to have those kind of group conversations. Now, Microsoft Teams replaces the need for um, things like WhatsApp and other kind of instant messaging platforms, because you can have all of that stored centrally and securely uh, and sort of governed by your organization from a data policy perspective, uh, all within inside of your Microsoft team. So for example, here we've got this volunteer hub and we've got a few different channels of conversation. Now a channel inside of a team is kind of like a chat room uh, and it also splits out the documents um, for that as well. So there might be certain things like where inside of our volunteer hub, we've got general for general conversations. But we've also got things like asking a question. So if there's any particular questions about, um, for example, here, what is the best way to inform someone of a holiday? Those questions can be posted directly here. Uh, the sort of retail channel for like the shops and things like that, potentially if, if you've got that branch um, and sort of social, um, the social element of things. So it's uh, it's really important as, as part of the kind of when people are working from home and there's a lot of kind of people working remotely at the moment that the social element um, is, is still there. So things which are taken for granted when people are working in office spaces and shared spaces um, it, like conversations, that social element is kind of taken for granted a little bit now. So certain things that we're seeing people use teams for is like having those social conversations maybe to talk about like the football or tv series or something like that but having that area in there for that, that particular type of uh, conversation when we're inside of our uh, our channel we can start a new conversation by clicking this new conversation button across the bottom and we can start posting in here and i can tag somebody for example uh like so. Um, ben would then get that notification uh, that he's been tagged inside of that thread. However, how do we know when someone's actually um, sort of um, get everyone's attention? So what you can also do is have conversations um, inside of here to get everyone's attention. So you can use the at symbol and start typing the name of the team you're currently inside of and say um, here is a message for everyone. And that will then post to everyone and that'll get everyone's kind of attention directly inside of our team. There are other types of conversations that you can post as well. So using the formatting button, we've got things like announcements and again, getting out the latest kind of information um, sort of about sort of working from home and things like that. Making these as announcements is a nice way of getting this across to the overall team and getting everyone kind of aware of what's going on. Um, so we can say COVID-19 update. Uh, we can select a background image to get people's update and then we can say working home policy changed. Get everyone's attention by at tagging the whole team. And then this is now a thread that we can all use to kind of have that kind of conversation. It's a big obvious thread um, that we've got this kind of announcements area. Now this conversational area, this post inside of Teams is where all of the kind of conversations will happen uh, for your team. You can share links, you can share documents, and this is where the, the main collaboration will happen per team. We've also got tabs, things like files. So files is, is where you can kind of store your documents for this particular team. We can create new documents, we can create new folders, subfolders, we can upload files and folders, and we can also sync our documents locally as well. So the files element of Teams um, is kind of over and above what most people would be using Zoom for. It's not just for that kind of instant messaging and collaboration and things like that from a meeting perspective, but it's also from uh, storing documents and sort of sharing those um, with the, the, sort of the rest of the team. So I can upload a document uh, by clicking on files, and selecting a document from in here, or I can create a brand new document. So I'm just going to create one, say the Dougie document directly in here. And once I created that document, I can work on that document directly inside of Teams without ever leaving the Teams interface. So within here, I can just work on it in like any normal documents inside of Word, give it a title, a little bit of text, blah, blah, blah. But the really cool thing about once you've created your document inside of Teams is you can click on this conversational button over here, which will then start a brand new conversation inside of my team 
surrounding this particular document. So when I go into here and say um, at tag someone, say, uh, can you update, whoops, can you update section two? And that starts a brand new conversational thread. So if I just close out from this and go back into my conversational area, you'll see that that document has now been posted um, directly to this particular thread. Now people can go into that, open the document, and that conversation will still be there on the right hand side. So we can provide all our kind of feedback. Uh, what do you think? And then all of those conversations are then stored um, directly inside of, of that particular conversation wrapped around that document. Now, this is better than using things like the comments functionality uh, in certain times because the comments uh, inside of documents are inserted directly inside the document, whereas this conversation is almost like wrapping around the document. It's never actually stored inside the document. So that means then there's no chance that accidentally any sort of draft comments and feedback and things like that could then be stored in the document, which then is then sent out externally. And you can see here now from me tagging Q inside uh, of this conversation, he's then provided a comment as well as liked this particular um, thread as well. Now, liking a, is, a, is a great way of also not only sort of like a social media kind of way, but also showing that you have read and understood a particular thread as well. So something else that we can do with our conversations is we can click on this format button and mark the conversation as important. So when we click on this important tag across the top, you then see we get the big red important that appears across the top and we get a red line across the left hand side. Now as a kind of IT support um, provider, we often uh, use this in combination um, with sort of tagging everybody inside of uh, a thread to let them know when we maybe one of our customers has got a particular issue. So let's say, for example, client X has got an email outage or something like that. Uh, and we want to let uh, the whole team know. So we tag the whole team and say to let you know. Everyone, uh, client X has an email outage. So now, as as the way we would use this is that we would post this in uh, to our team and say um, we're expecting a lot of phone calls from client X that there's going to be a lot of email outages and things like that. And then we've got this centralized space where everyone can go and get the latest updates, the latest information, um, at, without having to sort of. Uh, call a colleague or message a colleague and say where are we up to with this and blah 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 but it's all well and good to say as a team leader to to kind of know that this 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 information has been centrally stored and everyone's on the same page but as a team leader how do i know that my team have actually seen this so we often combine this with by saying uh please like this message to show you have read it and then once we post that then you'll see you get this big exclamation mark, which shows this is important. Everyone will have seen this. And then when you hover over it, not only can you like, but you can also use these other kind of emoji kind of reactions. But if we use this like thumbs up or any of the others, when you hover over it, you can then see exactly who has reacted to that. So it's almost acting like a, a read receipt to kind of say, okay, this person has actually seen this message. As a team leader, if my colleagues have not seen this message, I can then go into there and, and sort of check up with them and say, why have you not responded to this message or, or so on? Um, so that's essentially sort of the posts uh, elements of things. Then we've got the, the sort of files and then the, the other type of um, tab that you will get by default uh, inside of your uh, channel is the wiki tab. Now wikis are a great place for storing information for a team. So things like useful information about uh, emergency contacts or regional managers, COVID-19 kind of policies and useful links. And this is a great place that you can easily store kind of that information maybe things like how to guides for like new starters how do i use microsoft teams how do i request a uniform all that information can be stored directly inside of the team and wiki is one of those uh, default tabs so what you'll see when you go into the different channels by default you'll have posts files and wiki and as you jump between the different channels you'll see that posts it's got different content in here than it does here because post is then splitting that out. And it's the same story for files and wiki as well. So now I'm in the ask a question 
channel, the wiki information will be completely separate in here. So that means we can then break that out and have that as, as unique content per channel. The, the other tabs that we have across the top, we can add additional tabs by clicking on this plus button here. And this will then allow us to um, add integrations with all the other Microsoft 365 products. So things like Microsoft Forms that we're looking at before, um, as well as Planner we're going to talk about later on. But you can also have like favorite kind of YouTube channels or videos embedded across the top. It might be that you've got a particular Excel document, like a rotor that you want to have um, embedded across the top to make it nice and easy. Um, for people to access directly from inside the Microsoft team. It could be Power BI reports and dashboards of information. And then there's all sorts of third party products which integrate directly with Microsoft Teams. So there might be something that you're already using, for example, like Jira as a, as a task management um, platform that you can plug directly into um, your team. But if you didn't have that, you can also click on this website button. And if you wanted to embed any kind of third party website, so say, for example, um, you've got a HR system like Bamboo HR, Breathe HR or something like that that you wanted to integrate into the top, you can just type whatever that is into, say, for example, if I want to integrate Google. I can then paste in or type in the URL, click on save, and then I'll have an additional tab now that's called Google. I must have typed the URL a bit wrong there, but then that would then embed that um, sort of tab directly inside of my team. And I could remove that by clicking on the uh, drop down, clicking on remove. And this just means that your Microsoft team becomes this one stop shop where all of the different things that you need to use on a day to day basis are accessible across the top. So things like the donation form. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later on. But this is a power app um, that is easily accessible and embedded directly into our Microsoft team. We've got things like the volunteer feedback. So this is that Microsoft sort of form that we we're looking at earlier on. And again, this is all embedded directly into our team and requesting uniforms and things like that. Again, more Microsoft uh, forms directly in here. Uh, and volunteer portal where we've got SharePoint, which we're going to come on and talk, talk a little bit about later on. But it's kind of like an internal kind of intranet portal where people can come on and see sort of key details and, and updates, news, um, and sort of being able to have this as a, a one stop shop for all the things that you need to be able to get to um, as a member of the team. Um, so that is Microsoft Teams. Again, we do have a full webinar. That was a very quick overview of Microsoft Teams. We do have a full webinar that's dedicated specifically to Microsoft Teams, um, as well as if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask and, and we can always schedule a fault call to discuss those with you. The next thing we're going to talk about is OneDrive and SharePoint. So what we've already looked at a little bit inside of Microsoft Teams is the ability to store documents. It's not just sort of conversations. It's not just sort of meetings and, and, and things like that, but it's also the ability to um, sort of store documents. Now OneDrive is has the ability um, for everybody to store their own kind of documents, which they're not really so they're, they're draft documents and they're not really shared with everybody else. Um, and SharePoint is a place where you can have a platform like an intranet where everybody can um, access and use it as almost like a, an intranet of useful links and content like policies and marketing materials and uh, all that sort of good stuff. So if I just jump to my next tab here, this is what a typical kind of SharePoint intranet would look like. Now an intranet is basically like an internal website which is helping people to navigate to the key areas that they would want to be able to get to. So certain things like expense request systems, um, information about policies, um, booking leave, um, all that sort of stuff, getting access to forms, all of that can be driven from a sort of internal intranet like this using SharePoint. Now, the way the best way I would always describe to design your intranet is to think, well, if I was a new starter uh, for, for the organization, how would I find all the things that I need to use on a day to day basis? And this is what your intranet model should re really be about. So, for example, here we've got a navigation across the top. So SharePoint is all about kind of navigation, helping people find the things that they want to find. And you can have up to three tiers deep in this kind of mega menu where we've got, for example, like apps as a very top link. Then we've got training portal as a secondary and then training matrix as a third link down. Now, this is what we refer to as the hub navigation bar, and it's designed to be consistent throughout the intranet. 
So the internet isn't just one kind of site, it's a combination of um, sites and information about sort of policies as well as sort of teams. So all the teams that we were looking at before also have a corresponding SharePoint site where they can publish information to the wider organization. So say for example, finance, they all have their own team area where they can store things that they're working on a day-to-day -day basis and payroll and that sort of thing. Um, but as well, they also offer services to the wider organization. So things like expense request forms and things like that. So being able to navigate directly from the team to the finance uh, area here, to be able to access some of those kind of key informations and things like that, see who the members of the finance team are, um, that is a really uh, important bit of functionality from your intranet. So the internet homepage is usually made up of a combination of different types of navigational systems, like the ones across the top, like this hero web part here, which is providing up to sort of five links um, to both internal and external links as well. So it could be linking to some policies and forms internally in SharePoint, but it also could be linked to third party systems like HR systems or pay slips online systems or things like that. And then further down the page, we've got things like news articles. Now, news is a really good way of kind of publishing um, sort of content and updates to the wider sort of organization. Uh, and with this, um, you, you've got both internal and external news. So we can create a news article by clicking on add and then news post, and that will then create a new uh, news article inside SharePoint. So it's almost like a little mini sort of page where you can sort of they take the, the, the banner image across the top, the title, the body of the, the, the article, and this is then readily available for everyone to see on the home page. Which is uh, the other thing which is pretty cool is that you can also have news links. So if you saw a news article on a third party website, say for example, BBC News or something like that, you can also grab that link and when you click on news link and paste that link into here, it'll automatically pull through the uh, thumbnail image as well as the text and the title. And when a user then clicks on that, that will then open up the um, full uh, news article in the third party website. We've also got things like our, on our intranets, like weather, countdown timers, world clocks, Twitter feeds. So you can have sort of Twitter feeds pulling from your own kind of organizational uh, Twitter handle, or it could be um, as well as um, things like UK. Uh, I've seen a lot of people having UK government kind of Twitter feeds on their intranet homepages recently, so that they get the latest kind of COVID updates published directly on there from them. Uh, then we've got things like latest policy documents, but this is just an example. It could be documents from anywhere within the intranet, and quite often it can be used as kind of like a pulling out the, the most um, access documents. So technically they're the most popular documents that have been accessed from the intranet to make it nice and easy to find it and sort of um, access all those different bits and bobs. We've got events, so we've got things like um, being able to sort of add events uh, like sort of webinars, seminars, Christmas parties, all that sort of stuff, which are kind of organizational events you, that, you, that you want everyone to be aware of. And then they can click on these little tiles here to automatically add that as a reminder into their own calendars. Uh, and then at the bottom, we've got things like company links again, useful links and useful areas within here. Now, SharePoint isn't just about navigational um, kind of things as well. It's also got the ability for kind of document management solutions. Um, so there's things like, um, uh, we've built a policy management system directly inside of um, of SharePoint and essentially what this will allow you to do is manage your documents um, with a review and approval process. So every time that a document hits a review date, it will automatically contact the reviewer of that document um, and then once they reviewed it, they submit it for approval, which would require the approval of this particular person. And then all of this is then tracked with versioning control with both minor and major versions. Minor being like 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. And as soon as it's published, it's then marked as a kind of approved uh, version, which is like here 18.0. Now, all of this, again, the policy management is all well and good that we're be, being able to trace um, sort of when, when the sort of the documents have been reviewed and when they need to be approved and we can see all of that information in one place. But one of the common questions we were always asked was how do we know when people have actually read our documents? So we've then created a policy tracker, which will then every time a particular document is published and approved, it will then go out uh, to a selected group of people and ask them um, to confirm that they've actually read that particular policy document. So this then forms a little database in here of all the kind of people um, that have been 
uh, sort of contacted to say, yeah, this person's read this policy or no, they've not. And this is all driven by an email which is get sent out to these people to say, OK, you're part of this particular, you're part of the IT department. We've got a new IT data policy. Uh, we need you to prove that you've read it. Here's an email. Here's a link to read the, the document. And inside the same email is a button uh, that you can click to confirm that you've actually read and understood that particular policy. And these are all just kind of example scenarios that the SharePoint can do, but you can also build on top of that to create all sorts of different types of um, automations uh, of sort of kind of taking maybe something at the moment, which is, is a bit of a clunky process or even a paper process and automating that through uh, use of things like SharePoint. Um, other things that SharePoint can offer. So there's things like training portals. Again, it's very common. So within a SharePoint site, you can create a portal which has got useful links to um, maybe sort of training videos, training guides, uh, online courses and things like that that you want people to um, get onto. You've got training courses where you can see certain events and you could also use the bookings to have people bookings onto those events, certain documents which are relevant, so first aid documentation and things like that. You've also got the ability to embed not only YouTube videos, but there's also a product inside of uh, Microsoft 365, which is called Stream, which is essentially Microsoft's version uh, of an internal YouTube where you can build channels of content and information um, directly uh, inside of Stream and then embed them into things like SharePoint. So you can see the video of the month here, for example, and then other training kind of videos that are across the bottom. But this is a great way of kind of having all of that content, all that material readily available and go Going back to the idea of a new starter, being able to find everything they need, being able to go into a training sort of SharePoint site and get all that information in one place is going to be really beneficial. Um, and then the, the next thing was just about OneDrive. So we talked a little bit about the, the teams being kind of like where maybe your department or a particular project is working on a set of documents and they're collaborating. SharePoint is much more about a publishing kind of portal where you've kind of got the ability of an intranet. So those documents are usually things like uh, that everyone would have access to or need to be able to access things like certain types of forms and processes, policies and procedures, all of that sort of stuff. So that's where that would live. But what about the documents that you are working on a day to day basis? So those things are which not necessarily other people are going to be accessing you would store inside of your OneDrive. Now OneDrive from a kind of uh, a legacy IT perspective is like storing your documents inside of desktop or um, sort of um, documents on your sort of local computer's C drive um, and that's what kind of OneDrive is then replacing is that you can then store all of this um, directly inside of, uh, of your OneDrive and we do suggest that people do make full use of this because everybody who has got an Office 365 uh, license will have a terabyte of storage space inside their own OneDrive. So it really does make sense that they make the most out of using um, their OneDrive storage space. You can also sync um, your documents. So not only um, with OneDrive, but also with SharePoint and Teams, you can sync your documents so that they're readily available to use um, offline as well. And this is what it would kind of look like once you've synced it off, uh, offline. So you can access it through your file explorer and you can see all the different files and folders you have access to. And then the different statuses here, these different blue cloud symbols, um, uh, will sort of tell you what sort of state that particular um, that status that particular folder or file is in. So if it's a blue cloud symbol, that means it's only accessible if I've got an internet connection. Whereas if it's a green tick, it means that I have access to it. Um, let me just put this one back. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, so it means that I have access to it um, directly. Um, without an internet connection. So syncing documents has two main purposes. One might be, for example, if I was traveling a lot and I didn't have a very good internet connection, um, I can sync my documents to access them offline. But also a lot of people prefer to use File Explorer to navigate their documents. So rather than using like Teams or SharePoint to navigate just to get to their day-to-day -day documents, they also prefer to use the File Explorer view through that syncing kind of option. Let's just cross off that. So that was OneDrive and SharePoint. So just as a quick recap then, Teams essentially is what your departmental documents would be for. SharePoint is kind of like your intranet and documents for everybody to be able to access in the organization. So policies, procedures, that sort of thing. And then OneDrive is for using your own kind of documents and that kind of own personal storage space.
The next thing we're going to talk about is planner and to do. Now, planner essentially is a way of managing your kind of projects and having an agile kind of task management um, uh, way of kind of working. Um, and to do is then looking at those um, sort of plans and then managing those tasks at your own kind of personal level. So I'll just quickly show you an example of what planner looks like. So this is planner. So if anyone's ever used things like Trello before, it's a very similar kind of look and feel to that. Um, it's got these kind of columns, which Microsoft referred to as buckets, where you can kind of see the different types of tasks. But these could be called anything. For example, I've got here to do working on it, waiting sign off complete as I kind of uh, gateways that I can drag those tasks across um, into the different steps. But these could be anything. Say if I was planning an event, these these buckets across the top might be I've got ones for planning kind of catering, ones for the venue, ones for the entertainment or something like that. We can really sort of um, make this as flexible as we like. It's really easy to add new tasks. So I'll just add a new task in here. We can set a date of when that task is then going to be due and assign a particular person to that task. Then once we've added that, we can go into it and add more details. So we can add additional kind of labels if we wanted to. Um, so you can have color sort of uh, labels or you can call them whatever you like, label one, label two. Uh, and then you can use those for filtering afterwards. You can then say which bucket, i.e. which column that this sits under. As well as any progress of, of it started, not started, complete. Any priorities, if you're saying this is an urgent task, for example. We could also choose to when we're going to start this, so we can set a start date, and then we could look at this afterwards in a calendar view to kind of see where these different tasks are going to start and finish. We can also have checklists like subtasks, so this could be like subtask one, subtask two, and so on. And we can choose to show those on the card as well, so we can manually sort of tick those off uh, without even having to open up the full task if we wanted to. We can also add attachments, so the attachments field. Um, will uh, essentially allow you to add any sort of documents and things like that. And comments will then allow you to provide any sort of um, sort of updates and things like that. So if, say, for example, there's a task I was working on, but it's not yet complete and I was handing it over to somebody else. So I have completed X, Y, Z, please continue on or something like that. And then I can assign that to somebody else. And when I assign that to them, they will then be able to also see these kind of comments and, and sort of feedback and see exactly where this particular task is up to. Now with Planner, we've also got the ability to see kind of charts of information. So this is kind of like burn down charts based on sort of status of how many kind of tasks we've got, the priorities of the tasks. We can also see how many tasks we've got by members so we can easily make sure that we're managing sort of fairly the amount of tasks that we've got split out for our um, team. We can also see from a schedule point of view, a calendar of the tasks of when they start and end, so we can easily see it as a sort of calendar point of view where all those fit. We can also see the team members, so this um, Microsoft Planner does nicely uh, integrate directly with Microsoft Teams as well, so the team members are the same people that we would have access to um, inside of this plan as well. Now the other thing with Planner is that it does integrate directly with um, of the product called Microsoft To Do. Now, Microsoft To Do is a great way of kind of managing these day to day tasks. So, all the tasks which are being created inside a planner will then appear inside of a tab called Planned. And To Do allows me then to build my own kind of shopping list of tasks that I plan on completing on that particular day. I can mark things as important and they will show up as in my important area. I can also mark emails as flagged. So, when I inside my Outlook, if I flag an email, it'll automatically add that to my flagged emails inside of this to do list. And I can also create a, a whole bunch of other kind of lists as well uh, of information that I can bring directly uh, into my day, as well as I can view uh, any employees that report to me. I can see their um, sort of to do list as well of what they're doing. But say, for example, I'm just going to add a couple of extra sort of tasks inside of here. We can easily add some tasks. We can set reminders of when they're due, add a particular due date. We can even create repeating tasks, which is really useful as well when you're planning out your day. If, if say, for example, if I'm going to be chasing somebody up for something, I can create a repeating task to remind me to chase them out every day. And then what I can do is with my uh, task for the day, if I right click on this, I can choose to add this to my day. And then if I go to my day here, I can see that list that forms up here to say, OK, um, I've 
uh, this is what I plan on doing today and I can mark those off and tick those off and mark them as complete as and when I kind of go through them. Um, so to do is a really good way of managing your sort of day to day tasks and it integrates directly with your um, planner. So your overall teams tasks and feed into your day to day to do tasks as well. So that was planner and to do. The next thing is Microsoft lists. So just switch back over onto here. So Microsoft lists are a great way of kind of replacing things like um, sort of big Excel kind of uh, databases and uh, and documents and things like that. Um, so let me just switch on the wrong screen here. So for example, you might want to have like a, um, a Microsoft list to store employee details. So this can be almost like your little HR kind of database of all the employees, the department that they're in, the manager of who they report to. Um, this can then, sort of track things like whether or not they read certain sort of documents like health and safety policies, staff handbooks, equipment policies and things like that, as well as sort of next appraisals, their birth dates and things like that. So there's a product called Power Automate in Microsoft 365, which can then build automated workflow. So say, for example, you wanted to build an automated workflow that automatically sends a, a happy birthday email to people based on this column. That, that is the sort of thing that Power Automate would be able to do for you. But Microsoft lists are a really good way of, sort of creating lists for things like issue tracking, onboarding employees, asset management, travel requests and more. Um, there's all sorts of things that it can do and it can it can be used as a database um, for sort of mobile applications using power apps and things, which I'm, I'm going to come on to talk a little bit about later on. But this is a really good kind of way of storing that kind of information uh, in one place. You can still export to Excel and you can edit all of the data just like it was Excel as a sort of spreadsheet online in this kind of way as well, uh, adding new sort of items on and, and sort of editing it in line uh, like so. But yeah, Microsoft, this is a great way of kind of having these sort of mini kind of databases and storing that information um, in, in a nice sort of way that all, all of your kind of team members will be able to access. So that is Microsoft Lists. Next thing we're going to talk about is Power Apps. Now, Power Apps is um, essentially a, a way of building kind of mobile applications. Now, previously with kind of like um, traditional ways of development um, of mobile applications, it would take months, if not a year or so, to build a, a mobile application. Now with Power Apps, because it's using a framework that they refer to as low code, which means a lot of the applications are actually running on very similar kind of things to like Excel formula, um, it's a lot quicker to build so, something. So something that used to take months to build, you can now build very quickly within, within a day. And in fact, um, I'm going to be running a webinar later this year that, that's entitled App in an Hour, where I'll be able to demonstrate to you that you can build something like a, an accident reporting book or an incident reporting book within an hour using uh, Microsoft Power Apps. So I've got some examples of what Power Apps can do. Um, so for example, we've got here a, um, a check in and check out um, kind of app and essentially what this will do is when you open up this app on your mobile phone it knows exactly where you are and shows you with like a, a little pin of where you are and shows you, you sort of your address and the date and time and then you can choose to um, sort of sign in and when you click on sign in what that will do is then log that information directly into one of these Microsoft lists to sort of say okay well this person has checked in at this time they've chosen to sign out this time and there's the exact location and coordinates using the geolocation functions with inside of Microsoft 365 to know exactly where uh, they have actually sort of uh, whoops where they've actually been uh, now this can be used for kind of like um, for example, like an internal track and trace um, kind of functionality. So if you want to be able to sign in and out of your office, you've got a, an easy kind of logbook of who's actually sort of signed in now. This is the sort of thing that could be used for, but it's also we built this for um, kind of like a home care um, agency where they've got people going out and visiting um, sort of people out in their own homes. And obviously that is the, the potential dangers of, of something happening. So using this kind of app was nice and easy on their mobile phone. Then the people that are going out and visiting these places can sign in and sign out and then the system could potentially detect if they've been there for a longer period of time. Say, for example, they're only supposed to be there for 15 minutes. And if they've been there for 30 minutes, something's probably gone drastically wrong. So that can follow up with an automated alert to the manager to say, just to let you know that this person's not checked in when they're supposed to check in. And that kind of functionality can be used um, for 
multiple different types of scenarios. We've also got an example of a power app, which is um, essentially a visitor registration power app. So this is something that you would potentially have on like your front desk. Um, so rather than having sort of a receptionist or something like that, this would be a app that you would have installed on your on a tablet, like an iPad, and then drilled onto a desk. So when people turn up, they can choose to check in and then they can enter their name into here. So they can say Dougie Wood, the company that they're from. There could be additional fields in here as well if you wanted to have kind of like um, a car registration or something like that a phone number as well as who they're there to visit as well so they can start typing in the name of the person they're there to visit and then select them and this will then generate automatically an email to that person to say by the way this person is in reception here uh, ready to sort of meet you um, and then all of that information is then stored again it can be used for things like um, fire assembly and things like that so there's been a, a so people use that kind of information so if there was ever a um, evacuation all that information is stored in a microsoft list just like this so you can easily get this up on a tablet um, when everyone's outside and just sort of check off to say okay this person was in the building at this time uh, have they signed out yes or no and sort of tick them off as that they're safe now out in the car park also, uh, once this information is uh, entered, people can then choose to check out as well. So they come back into here, they can select who they are from this list and then choose to sort of check out um, from that option as well. Say, so, yep, yeah, um, I'm sort of checking out. So that is a nice way of sort of um, being able to capture when people are sort of uh, coming in and out of the office. Other types of apps as well. So we've got things like inspection forms. Now this is just in the in, in the sort of um, an example of inspecting kind of a vehicle, but this could be an inspection of anything, equipment, tools, uh, anything like that, any inspection processes that you need to do. Um, so you can go on to here, select, okay, from a drop down, what type of vehicle it is, or maybe it automatically knows what the vehicle registration is. It can then show you a sort of a list of things to sort of say, well, what, what is it that you're inspecting? But again, this might be sort of equipment or something like that. I can say I'm inspecting the brakes and then it gives me some tasks to say, okay, well, have you done this? Have you checked the brakes? Have you checked the parking brake and blah, blah. And all of this is then captured and then stored and logged. If there was any issues, if there's anything that was wrong with this particular say breaks in the scenario we could log an issue which automatically then log that into a microsoft list and then notify the relevant parties as well other apps that you might want so some some uh, applications that uh, nonprofits have previously used things like donation forms so at particular events you can easily log the name and address of somebody that has provided donation uh, the donation type and they can provide their kind of signature and things like that in here and then all of that information is then digitally stored um, with inside of um, Microsoft 365 uh, and that can be used afterwards then for claiming back sort of the VAT and, and things like that on donations um, then other types of things, so that there are very common types of processes, things like expense requests, leave request processes and things like that, which all organizations um, will, will use. So things like this as an expense request where we can create a brand new expense request uh, inside of here. And then once we've created that, we can then assign multiple kind of line items, multiple kind of entries against this, which all add up then um, into this particular request. This can then be submitted um, and, my, and this could go to say, my, my manager for approval, which will then automatically show it as being pending. And then once it's approved, it then gets approved in here. I can see how much of my expenses have previously been um, sort of approved. This can then generate an email to the sort of finance team to say, okay, this particular expense has been submitted and it's been approved by the manager. Please now pay. Uh, pay, pay that expenses but power apps can really be used for all sorts of different types of things there's, there's not any type of process that it can't automate um, there's a lot of work that's been gone into sort of do, doing power apps to make it as quick and easy and efficient as possible uh, to create these applications and when we're talking about sort of digital transformation power apps is, is really leading that kind of way we're taking things like power uh, sorry paper-based processes so things like lo accident logbooks which previously would have been uh, a piece of paper or, or something like that inside of your office can now be a power app where people can go in automatically fill out all that information maybe if, if there was something that was damaged or there's a trip hazard they can take a photo of that and report that back to the sort of uh, the head office or anything like that power apps would be able to um, sort for you 
So that was um, Power Apps, um, the ability to create mobile applications uh, while storing all of that data directly inside of your Microsoft 365. So overall, with this sort of digital sort of um, transformation, really one of the big sort of driving things is to improve your kind of communications. So communications um, sort of across your organization during this time is essential from both an internal uh, commun uh, internal communication and from a sort of social perspective. So those were the kind of things we were looking at earlier in Microsoft Teams where you might want to think about having like a social feed, um, a social channel inside of your um, Microsoft team as well as there's the ability inside of SharePoint if I just go back on to here where you can actually generate newsletters which can be sent to um, people based on the news articles uh, that are inside of your intranet so if you click on say for example email news digest you can select multiple different articles click on next and then that will then generate a newsletter which will look kind of like this which will then automatically be sent out to um, uh, sort of employees sort of say here's the latest kind of role here's kind of latest updates but it's always trying to provide the ways of staying in touch with your employees keeping that communication channels uh, flowing going forward and again think about things like within your teams where you might have um, social channels to discuss things like sports or tv series um, posting jokes or links to interesting articles um, we use sort of microsoft teams quite a lot um, for things like social events so we do like a happy hour on a Friday where after work rather than previously we would go to sort of the pub or something like that on a Friday for an hour um, we would all sort of have, uh, maybe have a beer and, and sort of play um, some games like there's things like Jackbox TV which is kind of like a group game where you can all play remotely and you can use Microsoft Teams as that kind of platform for kind of um, being able to see each other have a web web chat and and things like that um, also, there's there's things like live events, so you can have you can run your own kind of Microsoft Teams webinars. What we're using right now is called Teams Live Events, uh, and you can run your own kind of webinars uh, using all all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so if 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 just conscious of time, uh, I just want to get to any kind of Q and A's. Um, if uh, anything that you've kind of been demonstrated today uh, is of interest, please do uh, get in contact with us. Um, we can deliver a, a multiple ranges of different types of workshops um, to discuss these kind of requirements with you. So we've got things like Teams adoption workshops where we can um, discuss the rollout and implementations of Microsoft Teams, Microsoft 365 and Modern Workplace. So looking at, at all those kind of solutions and how you can digitally transform your organization using those, any kind of security hardening, Microsoft Azure, all those different bits and bobs we can, we can kind of talk to you about, or Power Apps and, and automation for creating a mobile application um, for that. So um, we do, um, if you are interested in that, then please feel free to email us at hello at valto.co.uk. Um, useful links. So as a kind of non-profit, um, there's, there's some links there which would be really useful. So the non-profit sign up, that's where you can then go through that link and start your process of getting um, and uh, registering for uh, Microsoft's non-profit licensing. Uh, there is some Microsoft help. So there's some links here for Microsoft help as well as a Microsoft Teams demo. So if you're looking at using Microsoft Teams, I would really advise using this interactive demo, which is a really nice way of kind of guiding people through how to get started with Microsoft Teams and how all of that works. There's also a, uh, we've got our own YouTube channel now. Um, so there's plenty of kind of all of our webinars that we've pre uh, sort of been done in the past. Uh, I've been uploaded onto there as well as um, any sort of how-to guides for sort of how to use Microsoft Teams, how to use Power Apps, how to get started with a lot of the different bits and bobs. So definitely check that out as well. So I'm just going to go to any sort of Q and A's now. Um, so I'm just going to um, have a look to see if there's any um, questions. If there is any questions, please feel free to email hello at valto.co.uk uh, and I'll have a quick look over what questions we've got in here. Do, do, do. Tuggy? Yeah. Uh, it's Joanne again. Could I just ask a question? I don't know sure. if it's po possible. Thank you. It was really informative. I need a gin and tonic now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was about uh, Microsoft Forms. So, you know, when you, you signed into Office 365, how yep. 
easy is it to then find Microsoft Forms? OK, cool. So with Microsoft Forms, if I just quickly just jump back into, see if I just go back to office.com, all the apps that I've been talking about today, you can access from going to office.com. Uh, and if, if this is if you've already got Office 365, of course, if you go to office.com in the search bar, if you just type in the name of any of the products I've talked about, so say, for example, SharePoint or Forms, when you then click on Forms, that's what will open up that screen. And then you can click on new form and start creating your new forms from there. That's great. That thank you. Question. It does. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cool. Just looking at some other questions. So um, can you share your screen on Microsoft Teams meetings? Yes, definitely. So you can share your screen um, and that can also be recorded as well. Um, so the recordings of Microsoft Teams will also be uploaded into the, the stream product. So I'm just quickly flick back and show you what that kind of looks like. So if I jump into that stream, if you remember stream was what we were talking about, where it's like an internal YouTube um, and you can kind of see all the sort of uh, videos, you can create channels. So you might want to have a channel for kind of um, health and safety videos and things like that. But also under my content, you've got meetings and this is where you can see all the recordings of meetings that you've previously um, um, been a member of. Uh, and this is where you can then um, get access to those recordings. We use it all the time for like first time customer engagements and things like that um, to be able to um, go back and sort of review what it was we discussed and, and things like that. Um, so I think there's another question here. Um, can you elaborate slightly about the live events versus other meetings in the webinar format? I understand Teams meetings, but if you want to do a webinar where you can control the output as host and speaker only whilst moderating questions, you see, it does have to be a live event because live events seems to be available on only on certain license. So, yeah, so it, it's quite a long winded kind of question that and it might be something that's best to follow up with you afterwards. But just to give a quick sort of overview then. So the Teams, um, Teams meetings essentially is um, where everybody would be able onto, onto a meeting. Everyone would be able to hear each other. Everyone would be able to see each other's kind of webcams if they had them on and things like that. Um, and they're much more for kind of collaboration purposes. Teams meetings can be shared externally. So you can have people who aren't just necessarily members of your organization as part of that. Um, however, the live events is like what we're using right now is where you can then create a live event and you can have um, uh, quite a lot of people, you can have hundreds of people join these live events. Uh, you can have a Q&A's kind of sections where you can have the questions uh, and answers, um, but it is a one way street. So it's kind of like I'm just talking to you at the moment um, and and uh, you can sort of only kind of respond via sort of text. Um, and that's essentially how live kind of events work. Um, I think that, that it's probably worth may maybe sort of, sort of um, I'll, I'll reach out to you afterwards with a little bit more information about this because live events is quite a quite a useful tool, but it's it's also um, quite a, a in-depth kind of element of Microsoft Teams. Cool. Um, do we have any other questions? Let's just sort of go back to here. So the other question, can Microsoft Forms be shared outside of the organization? So yeah, they can, they can be shared outside of um, the organization. So it's not just for internal kind of feedback forms and, and things like that. They can also be used for external things. And um, if you wanted to use them for kind of uh, registrations of things, you can use them for external facing parties as well. Um, just double check, there's no other questions. OK, cool. I think that is probably all the questions. Um, if you do have any other follow up questions from this, please feel free to email um, the uh, hello at valto.co.uk uh, and we could follow up with you after this. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks so much, Dougie.